What's going on everybody? My name is Alexander Ayling and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be exploring New Zealand's creative capital, Wellington. Big shout out to today's video sponsor, QCam Ego, for helping us make this happen. Let's get into it. Wellington is New Zealand's capital city. Located at the southern end of the North Island, it's a vibrant and creative city where people are open-minded, curious, and artistic. Founded in 1840 and named the capital of New Zealand in 1865, it's recently taken on a new identity as the expressive cultural hub of Aotearoa, New Zealand. With filmmakers like Peter Jackson helping put the local film industry on the map in the past few decades, Wellington's art isn't just on the silver screen. In fact, it's everywhere. But before we get into that, let's start things off with a coffee and a quick bite by the ocean here in Oriental Bay. I love Oriental Bay. Its promenade is the perfect spot for a morning run or an evening stroll. Plus, during the summer months, the beach is a great spot for a swim. Beach Babylon is a solid little restaurant that serves up great coffee and brunch in the morning and cold beer and cocktails in the evening. It's a great spot to grab a seat and enjoy the sunshine. Back on the promenade and a quick stroll towards the central city, we come to a string of beautiful Victorian style houses. Known as the Seven Sisters, these iconic Victorian houses here on Oriental Parade have become architectural landmarks. The Seven Sisters were built in the Victorian style in 1906 by architect Joshua Charlesworth, inspired by architectural innovations in San Francisco, California. Each one was built to express an individual identity while fitting together to create a larger atmosphere of statement style. These little houses are just one of the many things that remind me of San Francisco here in Wellington. But there's a lot more to see than these beautiful old homes, so let's head into the city center. All right, friends, well, we're starting our little street art tour here in the central region of Te Aro. Wellington's street art scene only really began to pop up around 2005, but since then, street art has proliferated across the city, especially in the city center and the Cuba Street neighborhood. It's lent itself wonderfully to the city's vibe. The narrow alleyways and the grungy, artsy feel is the perfect home for street art, especially larger murals. And this is the perfect opportunity to talk about this video's spot. The QCam Ego 3D camera, the world's first viewer integrated 3D camera. Now, I've shot a lot of 3D video before, but I've never used a camera that's as user friendly as the QCam Ego. Using stereo 3D technology, the camera lets you capture moments like never before. With the detachable magnetic 3D viewer, the QCam Ego is the only headset free 3D camera. This little camera is a super fun way to go out and capture the world in a unique manner. It shoots at 3840 by 1080. The fluid, crisp footage looks amazing and you can quickly and easily edit it using 3D templates in the app. I love that I can pop the viewer off easily and then the camera's slim profile is so easy to slip into a pocket and bring with me anywhere. Then when I wanna see what I've captured, I just pop the magnetic viewer back on and watch my 3D video. Additionally, it's got ego to ego pin code sharing. Plus you can quickly and easily edit your 3D footage within the app using their templates. If you wanna check it out for yourself, I've left a link in the description of this video. Behind me is a piece commissioned by the Garage Project Brewery, which is this building right here, by a local street artist named Cracked Ink. It's a depiction of the ancient art of fermentation interacting with native flora and fauna in an urban setting, pretty much just the personification of brewing here in central Wellington. This is a great little craft brewery. They have a very tasty uh, selection of beers and it's definitely a cool piece to come and see. It's been a while since I've gone on a street art stroll, but I'm excited for this one today. This city is brimming with art and if you're not paying attention, it's pretty easy to miss it. 
So just across the street from the Garage Project mural is a street called Egmont Street. It's a pedestrian only street. And as you can see, it's full of all these really cool murals. But the aspect of street art that in my opinion makes it so interesting is that it's ephemeral in nature. Murals can go up and they'll last for a couple of days, a little while, and then next thing you know, they get painted over or they get tagged on and it's this ever evolving, ever changing streetscape. It's really cool. It's lunchtime, so we've popped over to Cuba Street to my favorite Malaysian restaurant in the city, Rasa. They've got these great little $10 lunch specials for curry, roti, and rice, and it's the perfect way to refuel to continue exploring the city. Let's go grab some lunch. Wellington is home to a small but vibrant Malaysian community, which translates into a high per capita number of Malaysian restaurants. Rasa is one of my favorites for its affordable and delicious lunch menu. For only 10 bucks, you can get a nice little curry plate. Continuing our journey down the famous Cuba Street, it wouldn't be a day in Wellington without checking out some of the thrift stores, known as op shops, here in New Zealand. My wife Carrie is big on thrifting and always manages to find such cool, unique pieces that are big on style, but not on the budget. A few notable spots are Paper Bag Princess, as well as Spacesuit, Thrift, and Vintage. It helps that the last three are all right next to each other as well. Great ice cream here at Duck Island. If you're in, in the mood for an ice cream, grab one. But the vintage vibes don't stop at clothing. There are some great used bookstores as well, like the Ferret. But my favorite one is hiding just off Cuba Street. And if you're in Wellington, I highly recommend you visit. Further down the Cuba Street Mall, it's hard to miss the famous Bucket Fountain, the iconic kinetic sculpture built in 1969. Water fills the buckets at the top, and once they overflow, tip water further down the structure until they reach the pool or the sidewalk below. I know there's a lot more to explore in Wellington, so let me know if you'd like me to do another video diving deeper into this awesome city. All right, friends, well, I hope you enjoyed this video exploring Wellington, New Zealand's capital city, the coolest little capital. Its other nickname is Windy Wellington, and it's definitely living up to that name right now. But if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, let's change that hit the subscribe button. And if you have any tips of your own, please do share them down there in the comment section. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.